What's up knife lovers? Welcome back to Blade Stuff. My name is Chad Swindell and today we're going to look at the Benchmade Tengu Flipper. Let's do this. Welcome back everybody. Let's jump right into this today. We are going to talk about the Benchmade Tengu Flipper. This is model 601, of course made in the great United States of America in Oregon City, Oregon. This is a collaboration between Benchmade and the designer Jared Osier. Hope I'm saying his name correctly there. He is a designer of some phenomenal looking knives. If you haven't checked him out already, then uh, you need to check him out. We've got some great looking knives that uh, he has designed. So before we get into this, let's explain the process. Uh, we break our reviews down into three separate categories. Number one, in pocket. Now this is where we're going to talk about the specs, the retrieval, how much space that it takes up in your pocket, etc. The next category is in hand. And this is where we talk about the ergos, the deployment, the fidget factor, that sort of thing. And the final category is in action. This is where we talk about the knife build. Basically, what is the knife really made of? So without further ado, let's jump right into this thing. Okay. It comes in a neat little leather slip. Take a look at that. You know, the slip has Benchmade logo on one side. It's got American flag on the other side. Uh, stitched very well. Uh, feels like good quality, uh, soft leather. Looks like it's very well made. Doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And here it is, the Tengu Flipper. Just take a look at that. I've had my eye on one of these for a while, and the aesthetics alone just attract me to this knife. So let's go ahead and get some specs on it. Let's check out the weight. Two point six seven ounces. So it is not a heavy knife at all. Closed length is going to be about three and three quarter inches. So this is not gonna take up a whole lot of room. So this design is, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's a gentleman's knife, really, is what it reminds me of. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a mixture of, you know, old school pocket knife uh, meets very modern look and modern designs. And it's just a great looking knife to me. Now the width of this knife is approximately 3 8 of an inch. So this is not a huge knife. Not going to take up a whole lot of space in that pocket. Now most of the knives that I carry, I carry with a pocket clip. This obviously does not have a pocket clip. So when you're carrying this in your pocket, you're about, you're going to be carrying this, you know, in the slip and uh, it it's thin enough. It's not too big. It doesn't take up, like I said, a whole lot of room in that pocket. But that being said, it's also going to be floating around in that pocket because it's not going to be attached to the side of the pocket with a clip. So it's it's kind of a different type of carry for me, but I didn't have anything really bad to say about the carry. I, uh, I was able to carry it and because of the slip, you know, I was able to put it in the same pocket with my phone and try it there. Uh, you know, it doesn't scratch up your phone or anything because uh, of that nice slip that it has there. Now, retrieval on this thing is a little bit different because, you know, I'm used to grabbing my knife out of my pocket and uh, having a very quick retrieval. You don't get that with this guy because it's inside your pocket and then inside a slip on top of that. Now, I find that the easiest way for me is just to pinch the bottom a little bit, then it uh, pokes that knife out and I'm able to grab it and pull it out. So retrieval isn't bad considering that it is inside a slip inside your pocket but it's not something that you're going to get out in a hurry if you need it but i don't know that that's what i would normally carry this knife for either so that really sums up the in pocket category let's go ahead and go to the in hand category the scales so we got black g10 scales they're really really pretty and if you take a look 
right underneath that black scale, there is a white layer as well there. Now, if you look at the shield, that shield there is an omission in that black layer, which exposes the white layer. It looks really, really good. While we're talking about that, take a look at, at the back spacer here. Layers of black and white G10, and they just look really crisp, really sharp just adds a really, really neat touch to this knife. Now, the G10 does look like it has a little bit of a texture on it, and it, it has a little bit, but for the most part, it is pretty smooth on that. So it's not a real grippy knife. So let's look at the open grip on this knife. So here I am holding the knife, and I have to say this flipper tab is forcing my hand further down the handle. So I feel like I'm a little further away than I would normally grip a knife. And so it, it feels like the flipper tab is just right in the way for me. And I realize that there's not really any other place to put it. But uh, for me, that's, that's a downside for me is it, it the grip doesn't feel good for that reason right there. And if I could grip on top of that, you know, I've got a four finger grip on this. But since I grip behind it, you know, I have a three finger grip on it. So it just reduces, it just reduces that grip. Now, usability, I mean, you can still use it. You're either, you know, holding it back a little further than normal, or maybe you're, maybe you're, you know, using it like a kitchen knife, you know, pinching, pinching on the sides, which that feels kind of a weird, that feels kind of weird with a pocket knife, but, uh, anyway, you're just kind of forced to hold it a little bit differently because of that flipper tab right there. So let's look at some comparisons and size. So you're looking at an overall open length on this guy of about six and five eighths inches and the blade itself is just under three inches on that. So let's look at some comparisons uh, to some other knives there. The Spyderco Drunken right here. You have the Benchmade bug out right there. So Drunken is definitely a lot bigger than that flipper. And the bug out is also a little bit bigger than that flipper. Let's see here. Let's compare a mini grip on that. So it's about the size of a mini griptilian. So you can tell pretty easy that this is a flipper style knife. So that's how we're gonna deploy this. And it does fire out pretty snappy on that. Uh, it seems to be that the detent is locked in just right. It takes just enough pressure to snap it open. And the closing of it, it's got a pretty smooth closure on it. I can, I can feel just a little bit of friction, um, but it, uh, it actually closes really good. And it's easy to open with your non-dominant hand as well. So it deploys and it shuts very good. No complaints whatsoever on the deployment and the shutting action of this knife. Okay, now let's talk about the aesthetics of this knife. This is what drew me to this knife. The clean lines, the modern look, gentleman's type blade. I mean, come on, look at that. That is a gorgeous looking knife. And the construction is very, it's very well put together. There's a lot of little things, like I've already mentioned, the backspacer, that really add to this knife. This is just a good looking knife. Now, if you take a look at the blade, uh, it is a satin blade. If you take a look at the flats on there, you can kind of see uh, the flats have uh, kind of more of a little satin uh, look to it than the grind on there, so that adds uh, a little bit of difference in texture. Uh, it looks really nice. And the grind lines on this, this is one of the things that really intrigued me on it is the grind lines. I really like those grind lines. And you know, if you're the type of guy that puts a mirror finish on your edges, this is a knife that would look really sharp 
really good with that mirror finish on there. Okay, let's take a look at the centering on this guy. It's favoring the show side just a little bit, so it's not quite centered. It's definitely not rubbing up against anything, and it's not terrible, but uh, I haven't done any adjusting on this whatsoever, so uh, I would think that it'd be pretty easy to get that centered. It's not gonna take much to get that over just a little bit closer to the center on that. Uh, one of the things that I like is a good sounding knife, and even though this is a small knife, gentleman's knife, it's got a good sound when you deploy that thing, and I like that. So this knife is, is really, really sharp. Like I said, clean lines, the blade's inset. When you open that thing and get ready to shut it, the, uh, the liner lock, okay, there's just a little bit of it exposed, but they do have some texture here so that you can grab that liner lock. So even though it's not quite as exposed as what you may think, uh, it's still not hard. You just have to get used to it uh, to get that thing shut. So overall, is it fidgetable? Absolutely, I would say that it is fidgetable and I've done my share of fidgeting with it. It's just a sharp looking knife. So that'll wrap it up for the in hand category. Let's talk about the in action category. Okay, what is this knife made of? Let's talk about the knife build just a little bit. So the locking type, we've already discussed just a little bit. It's got a liner lock on it. The lockup is very good. I would say you've got on this probably 40% uh, lockup on it. Lockup is very solid. I don't feel any play whatsoever there. And side to side, okay, it's very solid there as well. Uh, so I think Benchmade did a great job uh, assembling this knife. So the pivot type on this is bearings. They've used thrust bearing washers on this and it's very smooth action. Um, I'll show you that by depressing the lock bar and it just, and it falls shut. Of course, when the lock bar is released, it adds a little bit of friction, a little bit of pressure on that knife, but it's very smooth. The blade still in this guy is gonna be 20 CV. So they've chosen a really good steel. I do like 20 CV. So overall, 20 CV is a good performer. Uh, it has high corrosion and wear resistance, and it's a popular choice for high-end and limited edition knives. So I've commented a little bit about the blade shape, talking about the grind lines, which I absolutely like. Uh, they call this a, a saber grind. It is a Tanto style, so you are gonna have two planes here to sharpen when you get ready to sharpen this guy. But I really do like how those grind lines come together and aesthetically they look very uh, pleasing. Now let's look at the thickness of the blade. 0.121. Okay, that's a really thick spine on that blade for the span that it has here. You know, we're spanning 0.69 inches, so not quite three quarters of an inch, and we've gone from nothing, you know, all the way up to 0.121. That means it's not going to be a, a slicer by any means. Um, that's that, that wedges out pretty quick, so I'd be concerned about the slicing ability uh, of this guy. Looks great, though. So in regards to sharpening, as I mentioned, you're going to have to set up uh, two different planes, one here and one here because it's a Tanto-style blade. Get a little closer where you can see that. But there is plenty of flat there if you do have a guided sharpening system. So you should be able to get that uh, chucked up in there and sharpened without any major difficulties on there, as long as you're prepared to set up twice, one here and one there. So there's not a whole lot of grip on this knife. Everything is pretty smooth and pretty clean. There is zero jimping on the, on the blade anywhere. Uh, you've got a little bit of texture, as I mentioned, uh, on that liner lock so that you can grab it because of how far it is inset down in there. So your, your grip is not just extremely great. Now you, you do have this flipper tab that is kind of guarding you from the blade, but it's also making you 
hold back a little bit further, your hands a little further away from the blade than what I feel is comfortable. So my overall opinion on all three categories, of the three, the aesthetic part of the in-hand category has to be the winner. The aesthetics of this knife stand out above all of the other features that I see. Yes, it's got a great build, but aesthetically, it's a great looking knife. That's why I bought it. It's just, it's just good looking. I think that it passes the action category as well because it is very well built. Benchmade did a great job assembling this knife and producing this knife, um, but I, it wouldn't be the knife that I would grab if I was going out for a hard use application. But I don't think that's what it's designed for. You know, this is more of a knife that I'm gonna have in my dress pants uh, at church. So uh, I think that for what it's designed to do, I think that it's a, a very well built knife. Now, the, the least category for me would be the, uh, the in hand when it comes to the ergos because it just doesn't, doesn't really marry up with my hands. It's a, little, it's a little small for me because the flipper is pushing my hand back a little bit further than what I would like for it to be. But overall, this is a beautiful looking knife. It is very well built. And I would have to say, good job, Benchmade. Thank you for watching and I certainly hope you've enjoyed the video on the Benchmade Tengu Flipper. If you did, I encourage you please hit that like button down below. It really does help our channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so very much for being part of the family. If you haven't, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can also find us on Instagram. Thank you very much. God bless. Till next time, keep it sharp. Thank you.